on this Mercedes-Benz 1989 300 SE when I tested the refrigerant and it only has 37,000 miles on it when I tested the refrigerant unfortunately uh, before I got my camera out it shut off 100% hydrocarbons in their refrigerant so somebody did charge it up uh, so they have propane or butane in there 100% but it also had 9.4% air which is a pretty high concentration of air to be having mixed with a hydrocarbon not quite enough for combustion but it could potentially letting it out I'm going to bleed it out to the atmosphere because it is 100% hydrocarbon and interior wise very good condition 36,543 miles body is pristine 300 SE this is definitely your grandmother's car and so what I'm gonna try here is I'm banking they did not add any ester oil or PAG oil they just put hydrocarbon right on the mineral oil which works perfectly and uh, and if it was somebody who was good enough and knows how to charge with hydrocarbons well they had air in the system so that tells me they weren't that good but hopefully they were one of those people who bleed out the system using their refrigerant hydrocarbon and they bleed it through the system and they bled it out the other way several times and if they're really good and they didn't have a vacuum pump that doesn't make them really good but run the system a little bit bleed out the hydrocarbons run the system a little bit bleed out you do that about three or four times and you get the majority of the old gas out of there and hydrocarbons if you didn't have a vacuum pump this is a very very old school method of doing air conditioning without vacuum pumps absolutely not recommended at all uh, there's other things to it than that I didn't mention everything but hydrocarbons are an excellent refrigerant I'm all for them I think cars should have the most explosive refrigerant we could possibly put in a car we have so much human population and we need out to call the herd here so uh, let's see what am I gonna do let's remove the valve core I'll bleed it down here first let's see if I could do this one-handed get the valve core come on get in there why can't I feel the valve core okay, I think I got it turning the valve core out you can see it turning out a little bit okay I feel it click so I got the valve core out and it's under pressure let's see if I got it ah. Okay, I know I got it loose, so, oh, maybe not. Secret to these, you gotta loosen them up a little bit because you crush the rubber gasket in here. There we go, it shot clear across the way. Now you can tighten it back up. You see what I'm doing? So there's a rubber gasket in there and as you tighten it it actually gets smaller and it chokes around the valve core and when you pull this out it doesn't pull out the valve it doesn't let it out so you have to loosen this up and then use your tool to take it out not shoot it out like i just did so since it's hydrocarbons propane butane it's okay to release to the atmosphere and let me grab a little rag And not much. Okay. Let's take the other one. Okay, open up the system. Make sure it's not too tight, and of course, not too tight off the back. Put it 
down. Okay, so now you can tighten this up a little bit. Put the hose back on. Okay, so. this one we'll close this now this still has hydrocarbons in the system and the safest thing to do is to nitrogen purge it you do not run or want to run hydrocarbons through your recovery equipment or your vacuum pumps I have blown up a piece of recovery equipment at one time when it was almost 30 years ago and I didn't use my refrigerant analyzer I was in a rush it was one of those days I had like 13 cars lined up in one shop on a Saturday and I skipped the refrigerant analyzer and guess what happened there was a big boom and the crankshaft and rod were sticking out of the bottom of my recovery unit so now we have both valve cores removed out of the car we have all the hoses, oh, this is not open yet. We have the vacuum pumps on. I have safety glasses on because there's still hydrocarbons in there and I could potentially damage my, if there was enough oxygen mix with the hydrocarbons under compression and the heat of the compressors, you literally can ignite the hydrocarbons. Do not do what I do, please, because uh, you will damage your system and may damage yourself beyond repair okay but I know for a fact there's no airs in in the hoses because they've all been vacuumed out it's at 98 or 87 microns so all the hoses are completely air free there is no oxygen content only the 9% oxygen content what was mixed with the 100% oxygen content in the lines and I'm not going to fret over that. So what I'm going to do is open up and start evacuating around. And now the reason I'm doing this, this is an old mineral oil system. And like I said before, I don't believe there's no ester oil and no peg oil. So there should be a very low content of moisture. I find many of these old Mercedes, 30, 40 years old, I could go below 500 microns in less than five minutes sometimes a ludicrous lucru uh, speed and um, that's with vacuum pumps running not turning off the vacuum pumps and letting it level uh, st stabilize out and leveling out so here we go one now watch the microns and I'm gonna open up the valve to the high side here boom there you go you can hear it just opened up and let's open up the low side just opened up so oh, let's open up the low side here too so now we're pulling out of both sides through two vacuum pumps this is a 12 CFM this is an 8 CFM and we're down to 1100 microns at this point not in the system if I had a micron gauge located in the system it's probably still 2000 microns or so well now it's probably about 1200 microns or so Valve core is removed. An old dry system. How long has it been since I turned on uh, the vacuum pumps? And look at how fast it falls. So this is what happens when you get a hold of an almost virgin system, other than it has been adultered with hydrocarbons. Uh, but I was suspecting they didn't add any oil. They didn't put in any ester oil or PAG oil, which you don't do with hydrocarbons. And uh, 
I'll leave this on here and let this get around 200 microns. Then I'll turn off the vacuum source. Now, taking a vacuum through hoses is the worst thing you can do. It's actually, but on cars and we use manifold gauges, uh, is not the best thing to do because you have so many losses of restrictions and seals. You have hoses that you use on systems with moisture on it, so that's an issue right there. But this is just to show you how fast you could get a system down under microns in a dry system now. If somebody put ester oil in here or PAG oil, especially ester oil, on these old systems, and I've shown this in videos before, every time there's ester oil in a system and it's been exposed to the atmosphere, I can't even get it down below a thousand microns, usually around 14, 1500 microns cooling. And then when shutting off, it'll go above 34, 3500 microns and stable out until the pressurized stables out. And then the water molecules start stop flashing off to a steam. And then when they flash off from water to a gas, they raise the pressure until they equalize their equilibrium where they can't do anything more. And then the pressure just stops right there. And that's what's going on. That's the physics behind it. And then you would take it back down again and you just keep watching it raise and stop raise and stop and you'll you'll keep noticing every time you open up the vacuum take it down and then shut off the vacuum and let it raise back up to stabilize you'll see a lower and lower number unless it's just grotesquely uh too much moisture which i've had videos on that too so as you can see we're in the 300 range i'll let it get it in the 200 range 100 range and fill it back up and maybe I'll show you the results if I have time, which I think I do. I ate while I was driving, so I skipped lunch and uh, taking a break. And I'll use that time maybe to shoot you a second video here. That's it on this one. Uh, until, unless there's a number two video on it, and let's find out.